faith in government, our trust in military leaders. Showed us protests and the burning of an American flag. You saw the war firsthand on the evening news, the first war that ever happened to. On the evening news every night, it was on TV. Mothers, fathers, wives and children lost their loved ones. Never before had a war been on TV like the Vietnam War. The war itself even questioned the bravery and the gallantry of the American soldier. It took years to help mend this. In some instances, we've never mended it. We blamed our soldiers And really, they weren't to blame. Our government, our military leaders were responsible, not the soldiers. As Jim mentioned earlier, there were so many places in Vietnam that each and every one of us in this room would never forget. Them cities, them rice paddies, them foxholes, all the way from the Mekong Delta, all the way to Hanoi. We will never forget them. Words like AK-47, Claymore Mine, LZ, Medevac, Mama Son, Napalm, RPG, 33 Beer. These terms we'll never forget. They'll all be part of our lives forever. Back in the 70s, I'm sorry to say that no one really claimed to be a Vietnam veteran because of the turmoil and the instant disruptiveness of being a Vietnam veteran created. How times have changed in 50 years. Now everybody wants to be a Vietnam veteran. And everybody claims to be one. <coughs> Matter of fact, I read an article the other day, four out of five people who claim to be a Vietnam veteran or not. <laughs> it's amazing, isn't it, what 50 years will do. In 2005 and 2006, I was a district commander of District 28, which includes three counties, Mercer County, Crawford County, Erie County. At that time, I visited the post in Erie, post 3390. People like Cecil and Larry are, are familiar with the post. The post is no longer there. Uh, it closed about two years ago or so. But the post was named after the first uh, veteran killed from Erie County. The post is named after him, Ronald Martin. And I walked into the, to the Erie Post that day. Post, post Commander Parker took me right over to the uh, memorial they had set up for Ronald Martin. And on the they had a picture of Ronald Martin and had a letter from the president. That time happened to be Lyndon Johnson. It said very clearly, and I'll never forget, I am sorry to inform you that your son was killed in action such and such a day. A difficult time for many families. Uh, you know, it, it's just uh, an unbelievable thing to see this many Vietnam veterans in this room today. I am just completely overwhelmed. I've had the pleasure, the honor, of going to Washington, D.C. three or four times to see the wall. The wall, um, it's an imposing structure, an imposing black granite that, that it just jumps out at you. I've had the pleasure to see the moving wall seven or eight times at least. And then most certainly there's a moving filling every time that I see them. Uh, you know, I, I can't help but stand before them walls every time that I go. And I wonder 
Why am I standing here and not there? Why am I here and not there? So many friends lost, so many comrades lost. And I always say there's probably three reasons why I'm still here and not there. Most certainly by the grace of God. Most certainly by the prayers of my family and friends. And surely there was probably a little luck involved with me being here. Over the years, my belief in America has not wavered, as many of you in this room has not wavered. The mistakes that we made in the Vietnam War, the mistakes we made by treating our troops, we learned something from that. We learned that them troops did their very best. And we're not blaming the troops. As Jim alluded to earlier, about some facts and stuff, and I will give you some facts. I'm not a big fact and figure man, but I will relay some facts to you. Along with the 58,000, almost 200 that were killed, there were 75,000 were severely disabled, 23,000 were completely 100% disabled. Of those killed, 61%, 61% were less than 21. I've heard a gentleman say to me one time, why do you think you send young people to war? Probably to uh, one reason for sure, they don't know any better. <laughs> and number two, they don't think they can die. <clears throat> when you're that young, you don't think about dying. You know, you just don't think about it. 97% of Vietnam veterans were honorably discharged. 91% would say they gladly serve again. There is no difference in drug, drug use between Vietnam veterans and any other of the American population for that time frame. There's no difference. The stigma, I think, has stayed over us for years. 85% of Vietnam veterans made a transition to civilian life. Let's talk about a couple of myths about the Vietnam War. Common belief that most Vietnam veterans were drafted the fact is, two-thirds of the men who served in Vietnam were volunteers. They weren't drafted. Common belief that a disproportionate number of blacks were killed in the Vietnam War. The fact is, 85% of the men and women killed in Vietnam were Caucasian. And 12% were black. You know, the more research you do, and the more understanding of the war yourself, I tell everybody all the time, I didn't know all this stuff when I was there. I had no, no idea. Common belief that the war was largely fought by the poor and uneducated. Servicemen who went to Vietnam from well-to-do areas, and 79% were high school educated. It was the best educated force America ever sent to war was a Vietnam veteran. One of the highest casualty rates of the war were most certainly pilots and infantry officers. They took the brunt of it. Common belief that the fighting in Vietnam was not as intense as it was in World War II. The fact is that the average infantryman in the South Pacific in World War II saw 40 days of combat in four years. The average Vietnam veteran saw 240 days of battle in 365 days. And the most glaring one that I have, a myth, the United States lost the war in Vietnam. The fact is, the United States did not lose the war in Vietnam. The Vietnamese lost the war. Vietnam. They had two years to do it, and they could not do it. I, someone sent me a letter one time, an email. I'm not a big computer person by any stretch of the imagination, but it, it's, it's a glaring reminder to all of us. It was written by General Vong Nguyen Kemp, the North Vietnamese Army General. General Lau 
was a brilliant and highly respected leader of the North Vietnamese Army. The following quote is from his memoirs currently found in Vietnam War Memorial in Hanoi. Quote, what we still don't understand is why you Americans stopped bombing Hanoi. You had us on the ropes. If you had pressed us a little harder just for a day or two, we were ready to surrender. It was the same with the Battle of Tet. You defeated us, you defeated us, we knew it, and we thought you knew it. But we were elated to notice that your media was definitely helping us. They were causing disruptions in America that, could not, that we could not do in the battlefields. We were ready to surrender, you had won. <coughs> he has a real little truism at the bottom and how true it very is. Do not fear the enemy, well, they will take only your life. Fear the media far more, for they will destroy your honor. I, you know, I, you know, there's so many things that happen in this 50-year time frame that, that where we're at now, uh, you know, and I even wondered myself uh, if we would ever get to a point where we would take the time to recognize the sacrifices that the Vietnam veterans made and their families made. In closing, may God continue to bless our troops, our troops in harm's way, continue to bless all of you for all that you do in making your communities better, helping veterans and veterans' families. You are all heroes. You all sacrificed everything that you had. You put everything on the line. You put your lives on hold. So on behalf of the Department of Pennsylvania Veterans and Foreign Wars, I welcome you. Welcome you all home. Thank you so much.